In an earlier video, we talked about the definition of relative maximums and minimums or local maximums and minimums, but we didn't go into a lot of detail about how to find them. In this video, we're going to introduce two techniques to find relative extrema, and we're going to go in depth into one of the techniques, and we'll save the other technique for another video. Um, the, so to find relative extrema, if you want to locate where they are for a particular function, uh, you'll, you'll use one of two tests. One is called the first derivative test, and the other is called the second derivative test. They are very different tests, but they both achieve the exact same outcome. Namely, they'll provide you with the relative extrema. So it's a bit of personal preference as to which test that you use. For the first derivative test, you're going to find your critical points, and you're going to use a number line and use the fact that the function will be increasing and decreasing to, um, you know, by using test points to get some uh, idea of whether you've got maximums and minimums at these critical points, just based off of what the function's doing. Is it going up and then going down, indicating you have a maximum, or down and then back up, indicating you have a minimum? The other technique is called the second derivative test. It also works well. It uses critical points as well, but to determine if the critical points are maximums or minimums, it doesn't use number lines, it doesn't use test points. Instead, it uses the notion of concavity. Now, if you haven't studied concavity yet, you can watch one of the videos where I talk about concavity, but it talks about whether your interval is concave up or concave down, um, and that indicating whether you have a maximum or a minimum. So both are very good tests. Uh, it just you know depends on which one you need to use for a particular problem. So let's um, let's spend some time and go through the first derivative test in this video, and then in the next video I'll, I'll spend some more time on the second derivative test. So here's here's what the first derivative test formally says. It says if f has critical uh, has a, a critical point at c, c is a number like 2 or 3 or 7 or negative 1, and the function changes from increasing to decreasing at c, well then you, you it's basically common sense. If, if your function goes up and then back down, kind of reminds you of the top of a roller coaster you go up the roller coaster and then you go downhill, you would be sitting at a maximum at the peak of that roller coaster. And that's what it says. It says if you go from increasing to decreasing, then that point is where your relative maximum occurs. And you can kind of see this in the picture here. You go from increasing before C to decreasing after C, you've got a maximum. All right. Likewise, if you go from decreasing to your function being increasing, then the critical point in between those two will be at a relative minimum. So the first der derivative test is very intuitive, very intuitive. Now, if you like formal steps, I'll, I'll write them out in terms of formal steps, but you don't have to think of them quite so rigid as these steps say. But this is what most people would call the first derivative test, do doing these things. So step one is to find your critical points because um, if you have a relative extrema, they're going to happen at critical points. So we need to find all those critical points. Now we'll just make up to, let's say it's negative two and five. Let's say those are critical points. So we're going to take those and put them on a number line. And I don't yet know if, it, if it's a maximum, then a minimum or minimum, then a maximum. I have no idea. So number three says using test points, and I go into more detail in, in my previous video on relative maxes and min, so I'm not going to go through a lot of time here uh, talking about this, but it says use test points to determine whether these intervals between the critical points are increasing or decreasing. Now I'm going to forego this talking too much about this step. Let's just say that the first derivative is positive back here, which would indicate the function's increasing has positive slopes. Um, we found that by these test points before negative 2. And it was decreasing between negative 2 and 5 and increasing after 5. Let's just say that's the way the, the math breaks down. Then pretty much common sense tells you that if it goes from increasing to decreasing, well then you'd have to have a relative maximum. It would be the highest point locally around negative 2. 
And, uh, and likewise, if you go from decreasing to increasing, like this example suggests, you would be at a relative minimum. So like I said, this is fairly intuitive. Uh, you just go through these steps and then what you get is uh, what relative maximums or minimums based off of the, the outcomes. Now the second derivative test, I'll just say one more time, doesn't use number lines like this. It doesn't use test points like this. It uses the notion of concavity. So if you wanna watch that video next, you kind of get a good picture of both ways of finding extrema.